Hello viewers, the topic that we are going to discuss today is the pyro sequencing. We know that there are two basic types of sequencing, the old and the conventional, that is the Sanger sequencing and the advanced, that is MGS. So the pyro sequencing falls under the MGS, that is the next generation or the advanced type of the sequencing. It is also known as the high throughput sequencing. Before starting the pyro sequencing, we must know that there is the basic preparation method of the genomic DNA, that is, whether we are doing the Sanger sequencing, the uh, NGS, any type of NGS, we need to prepare the sample because we need a, a DNA sample that is to be sequenced. So the basic principle of the preparation of the sample is the same. The basic principle behind the pyro, pyro sequencing is the pyrophosphate molecule. What is the pyrophosphate? Pyrophosphate is released whenever a nucleotide is added at the three prime end of the growing chain of the nucleotides. We all know that the synthesis of the DNA strand always occur in the direction of 5 prime towards the 3 prime. So if this is the template strand and this is the newly synthesizing strand, the uh, 3 prime end of the strand always has the free hydroxyl group. And this free hydroxyl group has always the lone pair of the electrons. So whenever the nucleotide comes, we know that the nucleotide has the three phosphate molecules as the name uh, suggests that it has three phosphates, the nucleotide triphosphate. So when the nucleotide triphosphate adds over here, the lone pair of electron attacks on this phosphate group and releases the two phosphate molecules. The released phosphate molecules are called the pyrophosphate. So what is the characteristics of this pyrophosphate and why we are using this principle behind the pyro sequencing? Uh, the, the reason is that the pyrophosphate can be converted into the ATP. How it converts into the ATP? Uh, whenever there is a pyrophosphate molecule, we consider it as a high energy molecule. So this high energy molecule can be converted into the ATP and further into the light. How? We add the chemical molecule that is APS or ammonium persulfate and the enzyme that is sulfurylase. The ammonium persulfate and sulfurylase converts ATP uh, PPI into the ATP and after that the ATP converts the luciferin into the light in the presence of luciferase enzyme. So uh, whenever a nucleotide is added over here it results in the production of the light. So this is the basic principle behind the pyro sequencing. So now further we will move towards the basic steps that are involved in the pyro sequencing and how the process relates with this basic principle. Okay, now we will discuss the steps that are involved in the pyro sequencing. First of all, we need to prepare the sample. And what is the sample? Sample is the DNA. So we extract the genomic DNA and then digest it or restrict it, with, uh, cut it into the pieces with the restriction enzymes and uh, the shorter fragments are achieved. These shorter fragments are then added with the adopters. You know that what is adopter? Adopter is a short sequence of the nucleotide that is added at the end of the, uh, the DNA, like here, you can see the short sequences of the uh, nucleotides are added. Why these short nucleotide sequencing or adapters are added over here? Because we need to load the DNA sample on a bead. This bead contains the short sequencing that is complementary to these adapters. So when these adapters are joined or, or they, they are attached to the bead, they uh, show complementarity and after they are attached, the polymerase enzyme start the synthesis of the new, new strand over here. So for the pyro sequencing, we need a plate which contains the wells. We, need, we know that for the sequencing, we need uh, polymerase enzymes, some washing buffers and the buffers for the media, which provide media for the reaction to occur. So this, these wells contain the beads and the space the space uh, for the addition of these washing buffers and the other uh, reagent that you needed for this reaction. So what we do, we start with the genomic DNA, then we cut it into the pieces and then we add the adapters. And these adapters are complementary to these shorter fragments or the shorter sequencing that are attached over these beads. Why we are, we are using these beads? Because we know that we are discussing about the solid phase pyro sequencing. For the solid phase, we don't want our DNA to move freely, like in the liquid phase. So we want that the DNA fragment is attached to a solid surface, and for this attachment, we need we uh, we have attached these adapters, like you, you can see over here. The adapter is complementary to these short fragments of the beads, and they are attached by the on the complementarity basis. And then 
the uh, polymerase enzyme starts the synthesis in the three prime direction of the new strand. And when the three prime direction synthesis of the new nucleotide uh, starts, we know that the pyro sequence, pyrophosphate is released as we have discussed earlier. Whenever a nucleotide is added, for each nucleotide, a pyrophosphate molecule is released and this pyrophosphate molecule is converted into ATP and then further into the light. So this is the whole process of the pyro sequencing. We started the DNA, added the adopters, and then we test the uh, DNA with added adopters in the beads, and these beads were put into the wells of the plate so that the provided reagents start the reaction, the polymerase start the synthesis in the three prime direction. And whenever a nucleotide is added, a pyrophosphate molecule is released, and this pyrophosphate molecule is further converted into the light. So, how we detect the uh, detection process involves the sensors. Because the light is produced, that light is uh, detected by using the sensors. So, uh, the basic principle is that for uh, for simple reaction means for uh, we will start with the adenine. So we will first add the adenines, and the number of adenine will specify the intensity of the light. Means if there are uh, like uh, look over here, if there are two adenines added at a time, because we are uh, for the single reaction we are only using the adenine nucleotides. If two adenines are added, the intensity of light will be low. But if there will be more adenines, the intensity of light will be high. So the intensity of light is important. And lastly, one more enzyme plays its role over here, that is the epiurease. What does enzyme do? Because we need to uh, start the reaction again for the next nucleotide, let's say for thiamine. So we will need to wash the uh, plate or the solution so, uh, so that the old reagents are removed. We don't want them to hinder or interfere with our, our next reaction. So for washing, we use epirase. So epirase removes the uh, previously used reagents or the nucleotides and then the next nucleotides are added. So in conclusion, we can say that the pyro sequencing is the advanced type of sequencing that involves the detection process or the basic principle of the pyrophosphate and the intensity of light. And why we are preferred, we have said that this is the next generation because this is very fast and very reliable. Thank you so much.